So the quarterback that Aaron Rodgers lost to was Tom Brady. <laughs> From the very start, I said Tom Brady was going to win. And I'm kind of mad because I bought a NFL. I bought it from the NFL store. I bought a Tom Brady jersey with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers NFC Championship hat. But I thought it was gonna come in by today. Not gonna lie. If they if they gave me the option to get one day shipping, I would have got it. I don't care what I had to How pay. How long is it gonna take? I don't know. They're saying until it might not even come in for the Super Bowl. What's wrong with yeah? Yes, I, I don't know why their shipping is so delayed. It's ridiculous. But you're lucky. You're lucky, too. Because <laughs> I was going to come in dressed with my Tom Brady and Buccaneer gear. I told you from the very start that they were going to make the Super Bowl. We'll see if they win it. I guaranteed that they were going to win it. Yes, you did. We'll we got see one if more, it happens. One more. one more game. But listen, the question that we're going to answer here is that did Tom Brady prove that he was the main reason for the New England Patriots' success? And I'll start with this. Yes, he did prove <laughs> it. I mean, look, versus... Versus the Chiefs, he threw 280 yards, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. I think two of those interceptions were not on him. One of them was just him throwing away when a blitzer was coming. The other one, Mike Evans, look, call me crazy, <laughs> but I think he could have caught that. I think he could have caught that. So I think two of them were not on his fault. His first year with the Bucs, they go 11-5 and five after being on a however many year playoff drought. It was a 10-plus year playoff drought. And not only do they go 11-5, and five, but they go to the Super Bowl as the sixth seed in the NFC. They're not even one of the top seeds in the NFC. They're the sixth seed. All games are, are road games. And now the Buccaneers are the first team ever to play in their home stadium in the Super Bowl. And when you look at the Patriots this year, they went 7-9. and nine. <laughs> Cam Newton, I think, threw 10 passing touchdowns this season. He might have thrown less. He was, he was the less. worst I think it was eight. It was like eight. He, he was the eight, worst quarterback. Eight passing league. touchdowns yeah, this season. Margin. With a supporting cast similar to Tom Brady, where he threw 24 touchdowns or 26, I believe, 24, last season, yeah. Bill Belichick with Cleveland with the Cleveland Browns, he coached there for five seasons. They had one winning season in 1994. Oh boy. They went 11 and five. His first year with the Pats, they went five and 11 with Drew Bledsoe starting. Then the very next season, they go 11 and five and win the Super Bowl when Tom Brady starts. And from 2001 to 2019, the Patriots have made the playoffs every single year, except the year that Matt Castle started when Brady got injured. And they never lost less than nine games. Bill Belichick, people had, look, he is a great defensive <laughs> mastermind. But in terms of trying to give him credit for the offensive side of the football with Tom Brady, that's ridiculous. Tom Brady is a film junkie. He was so good, and it looked so easy for him because he's so well prepared. And through, he only had Randy Moss for three seasons. He didn't have elite, an elite receiver for his entire career like we, Joe Montana we, did with we, Jerry Rice. Are we and, counting Gronk as a receiver, though? I won't count him. Okay. I, I guess I'll count him. I guess I'll count him because Gronk is amazing. Joe Montana had T.O. and Jerry Rice. Not for his whole career. Jerry Rice mostly, but not T.O. And when you look at the guys that Tom Brady has elevated, like I looked at the list. <laughs> He's going the crazy. receivers that he threw the most touchdowns to were Julian Edelman. Wes Welker, mm. and guess who's third? I don't want to. It's not. Can Randy you give Moss. me like a time frame? Was it? It's not Randy. He's Moss. on the Patriots right now. Jimmy Graham? No, no. James White, who's oh a running, my running God. guy. <laughs> wow. And that's who he was working with. The Pats in 2019 went 12 and four, and Brady was throwing to Julian Edelman, Philip Dorsett, Jacoby Myers, an undrafted rookie. Mohamed Sanu came on late, and everybody thought that was a big-time pickup. <laughs> Matt Lacoste, Benjamin Watson, and Nikhil Harry. This receiving core was awful, and they still went 12-4. and four. That was the, uh, Any A-B year? It was supposed to be the A-B year? Yes. So no doubt about it, Brady proved this season that he has more to do with the success of the Patriots than Bill Belichick. I'm not taking anything away from Bill Belichick, but... It makes it a whole lot easier to win games when you have the greatest quarterback of all time at dissecting defenses on your team. I mean, you look at in the week after the week 13 bye this season for the Bucs, the Bucs went undefeated. Mm. And Tom Brady is the highest graded quarterback in the NFL at 43 years old. <laughs> so, yes, he is the undisputed greatest of all time. And he proved this year that Belichick needs Brady more than Brady needs Belichick. Well, I mean... You said everything that needed to be said. I mean, even 
not even just using last year. If you just look at the whole totality of Tom Brady's career, everything has been him. Everybody leaves. Receivers leaves. Tight ends leave. Defensive left. But the one guy who stays is Tom Brady. And as long as you got him, I think the Patriots are always going to be okay. And I think people do take away from the fact that they love to say that, oh, Bill Belichick was the reason Tom Brady's success. And I kind of look at Tom Brady, like, relating this to basketball and the Tim Duncan test. You know, them two walk in into franchises and they instantly become one of the best franchises in the league, title after title. Regardless of who comes in, those two guys stay. And then you're always going to have a chance to win. So I think last year just proved it. That no matter where Tom Brady goes, they're always going to be a contender, and now he's on the verge of winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I'll say I'll start by saying I think it was a perfect marriage. Like, it, if if they didn't have each other, I question if either of them would have had as great of a career as they or as great of a dynastic run as they had because it's very very difficult to sustain that success for as long as they did. You look at the Chiefs right now; they've been doing this for. Three years, starting with the year they lost to the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. And it almost feels like you have this thought of when are they going to start to fall apart? When are the wheels going to fall off? Because teams never keep this success at this high of a level over this such early. a long period. So for them to do that, I feel like it was just a perfect marriage. Belichick handled that defense and had that unit running at an elite level. But he never would have had, clearly, as this season showed... Never would have had that success with Tom Brady, without Tom Brady at quarterback, I should say. And you look at what Tom Brady did last year. He threw for 4,000 yards with that ragtag bunch of receivers. You saw what they did this year. So I think you said at one point Tom Brady was the greatest quarterback ever at reading defenses. You could have just stopped at greatest quarterback ever because that's what he did. That's what he is. Nobody should goal. argue with it. Regardless of what happens next year, Next week, two weeks from now, whenever they play the Super Bowl, he is the greatest quarterback of all time. Anybody who doesn't think so, I, I, I don't know how you could argue for anybody else. And, and, and we're not talking most talented quarterback. I'm saying the greatest quarterback and ever. And most accomplished quarterback ever. Yeah, by far is Tom Brady. You know, he and he. It's funny because I, yeah, I used to throw shade on him. Drew Brees is better than him and all that. It was you know a little. You said fun. It this past year. Yeah, it was a little fun game between me and Joel, but. I think he proved that the last Super Bowl when he played the Rams. I think that was already the kicker in. He was the greatest quarterback at that moment. I think this is just adding on. It's the same thing we say with LeBron. You know, he's just adding on to an already masterful career he's already having. I think Tom Brady is probably the greatest player that football has ever seen. Something that's been bothering me after Tom Brady won was social media. I think <laughs> I think I follow way too many controversial people on Twitter and not even controversial because their opinions are liked and retweeted a lot. So it's actually popular opinions, I guess, like on a very small minority, but uh, there it's opinions of like, there was this guy that tweeted that how come Tom Brady gets celebrated, but LeBron gets hated. Oh, I remember. That. And I just looked at that tweet and I answered back to it because it got me pretty upset. Cause I'm like, what? <laughs> Because I feel like, especially nowadays in sports, everybody likes to make something about color, right? And I some things, yes, they do have a lot of validity, validity to them. But when you try to make everything about it, I think it gets pretty annoying. Tom Brady was hated. He still is yeah. hated. You know, JC, who used to be on a podcast, said, he's I a Jets him. fan. He said, I hate him. He's a Jets fan. He said, I, <laughs> I hate, hate him, yeah. but I respect him. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people still hate Tom Brady. And before this season, we're calling him a system quarterback. For his entire career. He's been called that his entire career. And the difference between the love that Tom Brady gets and I think the hate that LeBron gets is that Tom Brady, he doesn't have the fans that LeBron has or I can say stands that LeBron has. And football culture is different than basketball culture. And two, in football, Brady is the undisputed GOAT. Yeah, there's and, nobody in basketball. LeBron is not the undisputed goat, but LeBron fans and stands like to make it sound like he is. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets people pissed off. And that's what gets people to hate LeBron more or throw more shade at him. You Sando. don't see I, I don't see Tom Brady stands. I don't. Ba basketball culture has turned into a culture of stance. This NBA Twitter is more of a microcosm of like what you're yes. saying with the NBA culture. But when you look at Tom Brady, like you said, he has 
the accomplishments and the achievement, or I should say the winning accomplishments of Michael Jordan, but he also has the statistical greatness of LeBron James. So it's not like there's one guy who's been much like far and away better statistically, or, you know, even that gap that LeBron and Michael Jordan have in certain stats. And, you know, one has the winning. He has it all. He's the total package. He is, undi- I feel like, undisputed LeBron, the greatest player. LeBron of all stands time. remind me of Aaron Rodgers' stands. And I say that because Aaron Rodgers' stands love to say, oh, well, Tom Brady had this, Tom Brady had that, Aaron Rodgers didn't have this. If you put Aaron Rodgers here, then he would do the same thing as Tom Brady did. Like, he, they remind me of that in a sense of they hate that Tom Brady has accomplished so much. You know what's the thing, though? And, I don't think Stan culture is as big as it. Is as big in the NFL as it is in the Agreed. NBA. Oh no! And yeah. the NBA stand culture is ridiculous. I mean, West. There was a point people were arguing Westbrook is better than Curry. Harden is the greatest scorer of all time. Like I joke around about that stuff. I'm not serious. <laughs> there are there are people that genuinely that ha- that genuinely have a fan page of those players and tweet out these yeah. statistics all day players. long and bash other players. In football, football culture is not like that because. Yeah. The game, I think, especially when you're more comparing respected. football and basketball, the game is much more respected in terms of football because the fans, a lot of the fans understand the complexity of it. Basketball is very complex, but fans like to view it as Twitter very fans. simplistic. Yeah. Casual fans. And, and, and it's such a, like, it's much easier to look at basketball and just put everything on one player, whereas football, it's it's much more of a, you know, Divided. you could see it as much more of a team effort than basketball. Even though both sports are obviously not won or lost by one guy, like that's the viewpoint more in basketball. And you mentioned Aaron Rodgers. Even Aaron Rodgers, as much as I love him, I respect the heck out of him. I think he's one of the most talented quarterbacks ever. He still doesn't have the winning that LeBron has. LeBron still has four NBA championships. He's been to the finals, I think, 10 times now. Aaron Rodgers, all things considered, has not been very good you know, winning wise in the playoffs. And that's not meant to disrespect him, but when you measure up his resume to Tom Brady, he doesn't even have the the winning leg to stand on that LeBron does that is questioned in the NBA argument. So like when it comes to Tom Brady, he is just head and shoulders. And and as a Jet fan, I want to hate him because he made <laughs> our our division miserable for I so many Tom years. Brady. But I think, I think it's impossible not to respect him if you, you know, understand the thing the is, game. I'm, I'm a Jets fan, and I love Tom Brady. And the reason why I I feel that way and why a lot of people may be watching this and be like, what, that makes no sense, is because my dad said this. He told me this. It was like a few years ago. And I actually agree with this. He said, how can you hate Tom Brady because your team hasn't put a team or assembled a team to compete with their team? The Jets... We only had really one real rivalry game with the Patriots or time of rivalry, which was in 2010, 2009. Mm -hmm. Every other year, the Patriots have dominated. I'm not going to hate Tom Brady because my team did not assemble a good enough team to compete with theirs. You know, they they were competing every year because they made the right moves. I'm not going to not love Tom Brady because my team kept messing up. You know, And, and the thing about those guys, like you talked about LeBron James before, Tom Brady. When you're at the top of your game, you will always be hated. Like, people will always hate on you because people just hate on greatness. It's the way it goes. If you're not getting hated, you're not doing something right because whenever you are great, you are hated. I think it's just more of the fans, though. The fans make it as if if you don't agree with, like, like, for example, if me and Joel feel like two different people are the greatest, my fan base is going to feel like we need to bash the guy he thinks is the greatest to To make make it look look like, yeah, to make it, and that's, that's not cool. And that's what that's what I think stand culture is. And that's why I feel like when they try to make it about color, especially with the Tom Brady and LeBron thing, and then they try to make it about I saw some some people tweet about how LeBron got, you know, criticized when he attended his son's basketball game and Tom Brady after the game goes up to hug his child and he's like, Oh, Tom Brady's not getting criticized for hugging his child, but LeBron got criticized <laughs> for attending a game. Like, bro, you're thinking way too deep into it. It's not that serious. Like, even if you think that LeBron unfairly got criticized for whatever he did, why would you then try to make people go and criticize Tom Brady for something when you think it shouldn't be done one way or the other? Like, to me, it makes no sense. And I think that stand culture as a whole. And I don't know. I think too many people nowadays, especially in sports, like to make things about color. And like I said, a lot of times there's a lot of validity to it, like in terms of the coaching, the coaches and Eric B enemy not getting hired and stuff. There's a lot of validity to that. 
But most of the time, like, it's just a bunch of no arguments, sense. like, senseless arguments that have no backbone. They only have feeling into it. And that's what I disagree with. 